Hi guys, it's Cliff here again from Down Under. I've been doing some spark eroding recently and I thought it would be an interesting subject for a video. I know it's not strictly about tour marks or CNC, but it's kind of a low cost way to do a certain type of specialized work. It's a very interesting machine and um, this particular spark eroding job lends itself to some video clips. So I'll put that together and also discuss ways that you can upgrade your shop for quite a small amount of money and be able to do virtually anything, to be able to make virtually anything. You might need to talk to your wife first, that's the only thing. Um, recently I've been putting together a website for the Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe. Pop over and have a look at it. I'll put a link in the Thread Express channel under About. So you just click on that link and it's hallmarkdesign.co.nz you need to put that into the URL if you're going to manually type it in cheers this is an interesting little machining job uh, this sliding coupling or a double keyed dog clutch broke in a machine crash and I'm making up replacement sliding couplings <laughs> trying to align it with one hand so you can see there's a double keyway cut in there internally so I made up the basic part the blanks so that's just a sliding dog clutch or a double lugged coupling and um, it's out of case hardening steel super impacto and so I'm going to ma machine it all up and then get it uh, case hardened and it's an ideal job for the spark eroder I could have done it on a slotting head. I've got a slotting head for my uh, horizontal spindle of the milling machine, but it's quite a fragile little part, and um, there's a fair bit of force slotting out a keyway like that uh, because it's uh, got to cut reasonably tough steel, and I really don't want it to shift during slotting and, and destroy all the work, so I decided it's probably better to spark erode it. So, uh, let's just turn that noisy pump off for a minute. So it's just a matter of machining a rectangular section of copper. Whoa. And you can see the undercut there down at the bottom so that it's only in contact, the electrode's only close to the work. It's never actually in contact, but it's only close to the work over a small land and then there's dielectric fluid being pumped around it. It's a reasonably big eroding job from a filming point of view. Normally when I video spark eroding it's so small and difficult to get at. This, this, this job may actually be able to be videoed and shown a bit better so I'm going to bring the electrode down with the dielectric fluid flushing the electrode and spark erode out that double internal keyway down in there. Okay, well let's fire it up. I'll turn the light off, probably see the spark better. Press start. I think you can see that okay. Not so good from the end, but on this side it's quite visible. So you can see the uh, metal particles coming out, it's sort of a black soot. That's the eroded metal. And um, it's got to cut down through about half an inch of steel, height wise. And it'll probably run for an hour or so. But I'm just guessing, I've just started it. So the electrode's set in position with a basic little Accurite digital readout. And the work and the electrode are clocked up or dialed in um, in line with the slideways. And then it's just touched up and indexed to the correct position. Um, so you can see the electrodes coming up and down mechanically. And that's to allow the uh, little particles of eroded metal to float out. The, the most uh, 
challenging thing about spark eroding is to get the little particles of eroded metal, you could call it soot, out the way. If you don't get them out, they build up between the electrode and the work and then uh, it all sort of shorts out. So in order, see just then you heard the alarm go off, that's because I haven't got it set quite right and the metal particles have built up there and it's uh, started to shorten, it's alarmed off. I need to fine tune the settings. Um, you've got to have just the right amount of flow, the right amount of electrode lift off, the right voltage, the right amperage, the right electrical spark on time and off time, and uh, the right design electrode. If you get everything right, it'll run automatically. So I better attend to that now. So I've just stopped it to have a little look. It's only been running for about a minute and it's cut down, you know, a couple of millimeters deep. So it's cutting pretty aggressively. Um, looks like this will be an easy job. I like this type of repair job. One of my clients has got a good quality Swedish drill press and the operator uh, crashed it. They uh, tried to change gear while it was running and um, See the little sliding coupler gear there that runs on two keyways. Well that engaged in the uh, drive dog and locked up and smashed the gear and smashed the coupling and nasty. So I have to make up a couple of new couplings and um, arrange to get the gear cut um, so you can get this back into production again. You can see the progress here on this dial indicator. The whole electrode is coming up and down mechanically to allow the particles of metal to uh, float away. And each time it strikes down, it's cutting down about two or three hundredths further each time. So that's about a thou. So every, what's that, every two or three seconds it goes another thou deeper. So a job like this might run for you know, maybe an hour um, because it's not too fussy. But sometimes a, d a very deep spark eroding job with a difficult shape can run all day. Well, that went pretty smoothly. So the electrode doesn't actually contact the work. There's a gap between the electrode and the work called the spark gap. And um, the, sp the spark jumps across that gap and depending on the current, depending on the voltage and the amperage, that gap could be between 2 and 5 thou. Uh, so you need to make the electrode smaller by that amount or offset it and repass it through after you've taken the initial roughing cut. Um, and that's uh, a fairly easy spark eroding job. So there we are, slotting with electricity. So you can see just above that first zone of four or five millimeters, it's a little bit of clearance to allow the dielectric fluid to flush the metal particles out. Um, that always helps. The biggest problem with spark eroding is getting the little metal particles out because they're between the electrode and the work and they quickly build up and cause um, arcing problems and shorting problems and then the whole thing melts down. So the trick is uh, to try and get those particles out smoothly and it's a bit like letting the process breathe. You can only go so fast it has to breathe out the expelled particles of metal. Well that's come out well, that's number one done now. So um, I'll set it up now and uh, cut the uh, double keyway in the second part. Um, you can see the electrode there has worn on the very bottom by about half a millimeter. But that doesn't matter because the electrode passes through the work and this, this design of electrode is an electrode that passes through and it's only the first half a millimeter that's worn above that there's not much wear at all um, 
but you need to take that into account when you're cutting certain shapes that you get wear on the bottom depending on the settings and the flushing rate and a whole lot of variables um, it isn't a hundred percent cutting the work there is some wear to the electrode so you can see the advantage of spark eroding is that it allows you to cut uh, a sort of a, a replica of the electrode and so shapes that are difficult to machine uh, with cutters, sharp internal corners, uh, very handy for mold making work. You make an electrode similar to the product and then you cut the cavity into the mold and um, it allows you to cut hardened steel, it'll cut even uh, tungsten carbide. So it's a brilliant uh, process for certain types of machining, certain types of work. It's going down on the second one a little bit quicker and smoother because the sharp edges of the leading edge of the electrode have worn down and there's no little uh, pockets there for the sludge to collect in and cause arcing. Um, I probably could have filed that shape to start with. Having said that, it's just slowed down. Anyway, it's going pretty good overall. As long as it's running automatically, I can go away and do something else. It's one of my favorite little uh, phrases. Anyway, uh, this spark, these type of spark eroding machines, I've done a couple of videos in my earlier uh, series on spark eroders, but I know some of you may have uh, work for this type of machine, and it's worth thinking about. With the addition of a spark eroder and a cylindrical and surface grinder to your workshop, you can literally make virtually anything. Um, so you can pick up a second hand one of these small spark eroders quite cheaply. Um, you know, there, there, there's several factories in Taiwan that specialize in making them for a very low price, and you can pick them up. I uh, should stop and just clear that electrode. Oh no, it's not going too bad. Anyway, hang on. That's better. I just needed to increase the pressure of the flushing jets. Um, <laughs> famous last words. Hold on. Oh, keep the camera rolling. Because you can see this is my life, the life of operating a spark eroder. Anyway, as I was saying, um, you can pick up one of these machines second hand. If you look for a good brand, the CJ brand, I've had two of these machines over the years and they're very reliable. They're also called Creator. Um, and, uh, well, here we are. Made in Taiwan, very reliable. You can pick up one that hasn't done very many hours from industry. They probably cost about I don't know, around about 15,000 US dollars new, but you can probably pick up a second hand one for one or two thousand dollars. It's just sort of become redundant in a factory, um, and uh, they're pretty reliable things. I've had one or two faults over a 10 year period, and uh, you know, um, if you've got a space in your workshop and you need to do this type of work, they're really brilliant. So while a mill and a lathe are the work horses of your workshop and will do 90% of your work, there are three machines that allow you to make virtually anything and tick off that last 10% of the work. And that's the spark eroder, the cylindrical grinder and the surface grinder. And you might think, oh, that's, that's getting a bit excessive. That's a lot of money. But really it's not, you know, because you can buy second-hand machines. I mean, this old brown and sharp, Probably there's, there's probably thousands of them in the States and other brands sitting there that have had little use that you can pick up for a very low price and uh, have fun overhauling it and getting it going again and it'll probably work as well as when it was new. You can pick up a Chinese or Taiwanese surface grinder for a few thousand dollars and grind precision flat surfaces and with those machines you can really do virtually anything. You can make virtually anything. I 
and those three additional machines allow you to make anything. You know, I'd love to have a wire cut machine and uh, one or two other machines, but they're not essential. You can do work on a on an ordinary type of spark eroder or a ram type of spark eroder like this um, instead of a wire cut machine. It, it's not as efficient, not as fast, but you can get there with a machine like this. Well, that's probably enough for one video. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.